people who eat the most sugar get the most diseases. The fruit that we have today in our supermarkets is not natural. One billion people in the world have either type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes. Up to 80% of the population still has glucose spikes. This leads to lots of symptoms, from mental health problems to fertility to acne to faster aging. If you have really high glucose levels, high insulin levels, you're more likely to get heart disease, dementia, depression. So most of us have unhealthy glucose levels. But in this video, do not worry about your unhealthy glucose level because we will learn from Jesse and Chosp, the dynamic biochemist who's taken the world by storm as the glucose goddess. With a mission to transform lives, she's breaking down the science of glucose spikes, making it easy for millions to take control of their health. As a New York Times best-selling author, her debut book, Glucose Revolution, The Life-Changing Power of Balancing Your Blood Sugar, has sold millions of copies worldwide, igniting a global movement. Her latest book, The Glucose Goddess Method, is another New York Times bestseller, offering a four-week roadmap to crush cravings, boost energy, and feel incredible. In this video, we will look into the very essence of the teachings of the glucose goddess. We'll dive into what a glucose spike is and explore three key consequences of it. Then, we'll reveal the top five hacks to reduce glucose spikes without drastically changing your diet. In the final section, we'll uncover three seemingly healthy foods you should actually cut back on for a longer, healthier life. Let's first understand what glucose spike is. There are two that impact our blood sugar levels. It's starches, so that's bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, oats, and sugars. If you eat a lot of starches and sugars at once, a lot of glucose molecules are arriving into your blood. That's the spike you see on your glucose monitor. These spikes have a few different consequences. You know, having a few spikes here and there is not a big deal, but if you have really big spikes, which I think most of us are discovering we have, even if we don't have diabetes, that's when problems start happening. And there's basically three processes that take place in your body when you spike. It's chronic fatigue of your mitochondria, aging, glycation, and then insulin release. Too much glucose taxes the mitochondria through oxidative stress, overload of the energy-producing machinery, and inflammation, eventually leading to reduced efficiency in energy production and tired mitochondria. The second consequence is glycation. Glycation. It's the process of browning or of cooking. A human being, from the moment we're born, we're slowly cooking we're slowly glycating. When we're fully glycated, we die. And every glucose spike increases this process of glycation. It accelerates aging. You get wrinkles faster if you glycate more. And also on the inside, your organs slowly get damaged. The third consequence of glucose spike is the increased level of insulin, which will have negative impact to our body. In response, your pancreas sends a hormone called insulin. And insulin stores glucose away into your liver into your muscles, and then when those are full, insulin stores glucose away into your fat cells. And that's one of the ways that you gain fat on your body. It's in response to the spikes and your body trying to protect you from the spikes. Insulin itself has consequences and is the driver of type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. Here are some studies that show how glucose spikes may affect fertility cause brain fog and Alzheimer's. The more insulin resistant you are, the more likely you are to be infertile. One study that's really interesting shows us that in rats, scientists noticed that the more glucose spikes they had, the slower the speed of the signal between their neurons. So their brain was literally slowing down. The information was going more slowly throughout the brain. They theorized that in humans, this could lead to brain fog. There's a study that has followed people for 30 years. They found that people who had elevated glucose levels in their 40s were more likely to get Alzheimer's when they reached 60, 70, 80. So having high glucose levels at midlife is a risk factor for Alzheimer's when you're older. Not only that, but scientists have started to see that some of the things you see in the brain of someone with Alzheimer's are actually similar to what you see in the body of somebody with diabetes, namely inflammation, glycation, and insulin resistance. So much so that some scientists call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes, diabetes of the brain. Now we understand the potential damage caused by frequent glucose spikes, let's hear from the glucose goddess on her top 5 hacks in reducing the glucose spikes. First and the most important hack is to have savory breakfast. The savory breakfast. The principle is the following. A savory breakfast that keeps your glucose levels steady and helps you feel amazing is built around protein. 
eggs, fish, nuts, tofu, protein powder, leftovers from dinner. And then you can add some fiber or some fat to that. So, you know, olive oil, butter, avocados, maybe a bit of spinach if you want. And then the most important thing to remember is that in a savory breakfast, you should not eat anything sweet, except if you want some whole fruit for taste. No fruit juices, no jam, no sweet cereal, no sweet yogurts, etc. You can still have sweet foods later in the day, but for breakfast, if you want to set yourself up for success, it's very important to not have sweet food. If you just do one hack, do this one. It is a complete game changer, and a savory breakfast should keep you satiated for four hours. The second hack is to have one tablespoon of vinegar a day. Drink one tablespoon of vinegar in a big glass of water before your biggest meal of the day. And the reason it's important is because it's easy. So vinegar contains acetic acid, any kind of vinegar. Just dilution so that it doesn't hurt your teeth. That's to interact with your digestive enzyme. Acetic acid slows down how quickly food breaks down into glucose molecules when you digest it. So one tablespoon, big glass of water before eating, and um, it's quite powerful. You can do it once a day. That's what I recommend. Um, a lot of people ask me, what about lemon? So lemon contains citric acid, and that's a different molecule. And the studies show that one tablespoon of vinegar in a big glass of water, that can reduce the spike of your meal by up to 30%. One thing to note about vinegar is that vinegar gummies are not the way to go as those gummies often contain sugar. That have two grams of sugar mm. per gummy. Mm. And they say vinegar gummies, so you think, oh, that's going to be good for me. I'm going to be able to replace the vinegar drink with this. But vinegar gummies containing sugar will negate the positive effect of vinegar. So remember to go for the real vinegar diluted with water instead. Next hack is to have vegetables as the starter to your meals. Veggie starters. Veggies contain fiber. When you have fiber at the beginning of a meal, what it does is that it coats your intestine. It makes a sort of protective barrier, this protective mesh, kind of gooey, fibrous mesh. And so any glucose you eat afterwards will not be able to go through your intestine into your bloodstream so quickly. So it slows down the arrival of glucose into your blood, and it slows down that spike, eating your food in the right order. Now, the science shows us that if you eat a meal in the right order, meaning veggies first, then proteins and fats, then starches and sugars, instead of the opposite, you reduce the glucose spike of the meal by up to 75%. You're eating the same meal, the same quantity, the same food, just the order and using that fiber first mentality is going to reduce your spikes. The fourth hack is also similar to veggie as starter. It is the concept of clothes on carbs. Clothes on carbs. Anytime you eat starches or sugars, which are the big category of carbs, make sure you're never eating them naked or on their own. Because if you eat them on their own, poof, they just turn into glucose really, really quickly. So instead of having a slice of bread on its own, have bread and some avocado. Add some fat to that. That's a good clothing to add. Or add some protein or add some fiber. Or ham and melon or rice and beans. Salad and then pasta, which is much better for your glucose levels than having pasta and then the salad. The fifth hack is to move after eating. There are 10 hacks in total, but this video shared five most easy and important hacks. After a meal, use your muscles for 10 minutes. Now, this can be just walking. It can be cleaning your kitchen. It can be doing my new favorite thing, which is calf raises. So you just sit at your desk and you just like put your feet planted on the floor and you just raise your feet up on your toes. So only your toes are touching. And you do these calf raises or calf push-ups for like five minutes. Your calf actually has a muscle called the soleus muscle, which is specifically excellent at soaking up glucose from the bloodstream. So the calf raises are a good option because as you're contracting your muscles, the glucose from the meal, as it arrives in your bloodstream, is going to be soaked up by your muscles mm. and used for energy. So you're going to reduce the glucose spike of that meal without needing to change what's in the meal at all. While the glucose goddess doesn't advocate for restrictive diets, she often spotlights three seemingly healthy foods that can actually trigger significant glucose spikes. First is oats. Oats are a grain and grains are full of starch. And as I explained, there's two types of food that create glucose spikes in the body, starches and sugars. So oats are a starch. And actually, if you look at starch, it's just one long chain of glucose molecules attached hand to hand. And when you eat starch, those glucose molecules get freed and then it creates a glucose spike. So oats in the morning, if you're just having oats, you're just having starch, which means glucose spike. One, 
you can learn to put some clothes on those oats. So maybe some nut butter, maybe you can put some protein powder in there. Maybe you have a little egg, you know, a little soft boiled egg in the oats, make it like savory oats. Uh, you can find lots of nice little combinations to put protein, fat and fiber in the oats. So it is not a surprise that the milk made from oat, oat milk, can cause a big glucose spike. The way oat milk is made is that it's just taking oats and pulverizing them into this juice. It's mm. making oat juice. When you look on a glucose monitor at what happens when you drink an oat milk coffee versus a whole cow's milk coffee, I mean, it's night and day. The oat milk or the rice milk will create a big glucose spike in the body. And it makes sense because you're just drinking liquid starch. So it's pretty obvious if you think about the source of it. If you have something like almond milk, at least almonds don't have that much starch in them. Mm. So it's a much better situation. Coconut milk is also better. Cow's milk if you're into dairy. But oat milk, unfortunately, massive, massive spikes in most people. Now, I know people really love oat milk. So here's, here's my recommendation. If... You don't have many symptoms and you feel pretty great and you have good energy, no cravings, whatever, no problem. And you love the oat milk. Go ahead. I have nothing to teach you. But if you could feel better than you currently do and if you want to help some of the symptoms you might be feeling, you might want to consider switching to another type of milk. Or you can also do another hack I have. If you want to eat something sweet, have it at the end of a meal instead of on empty stomach. The next seemingly healthy foods you should be mindful about are fruits. Humans have been crossing and breeding fruit for millennia to make them more appetizing for humans, to make them sweeter, to make them have fewer seeds, less fiber. If you look at an ancestral banana, it's tiny, it's full of seeds, it's quite dense and it's not very sweet. If you look at a banana today, it's very sweet, very little fiber, very little seeds, super easy to eat. Humans have been creating these fruit to be extra juicy and extra sweet and extra full of sugar. So that's one thing to note. The fruit you see today in the supermarket is not natural. However, a piece of fruit still has fiber in it. Fiber helps reduce the glucose spike of a meal mm -hmm. because it creates that mesh in the intestine. So if you want to eat something sweet, eating a piece of whole fruit is still the best thing to do because of that fiber blunting the spike mm -hmm. of sugar. Always eat your fruit whole. Never juiced, never dried, never smoothied only whole to have that protective fiber in there. Specifically, the glucose goddess mentions that grapes and some tropical fruits cause higher glucose spikes so we should be more mindful in consumption. Grapes first. It's just a big dose of sugar. It's in the fruit format so people think it's good for them, but actually when it comes to your glucose levels, it's just big glucose spike. So berries are lower in sugar so create a smaller spike, but any tropical fruit like bananas, mangoes, papayas, and then grapes also, those are really high in sugar. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, a piece of whole fruit is okay because it has fiber in it. So when eating fruit, we can apply one of the hacks we learned earlier, eating in healthier combination. Grapes and cheese. The glucose response shows us that if we had the grape on its own, it would be a bigger spike than the grape with the cheese. Not only is it really delicious, it's also better for your glucose levels because you're putting clothing on that sugary carb that is the piece of fruit. The third and final food the glucose goddess frequently cautions us to watch out for is honey. Also, I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. So people often think like, okay, honey has antioxidants in it, so that's why they'll have it. So there are many, as there are as many antioxidants in a teaspoon of honey as there are in half a blueberry. When you're eating honey, you don't do it thinking it's beneficial for you. It's really dessert. It's sugar. 